Hey, happy Saturday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to give you the latest information on what's going on with Barrel, because right now, it looks very deceiving, and don't believe what you see right here. This is looking very weak, and they even have tropical storm impacts going all the way up towards the coast, still showing it will strengthen all the way to a Cat 1 on landfall. I'm showing it will be a 2, potentially go all the way to a major still, and I'm showing more of a turn. Matter of fact, it has taken more of a northern and easterly turn in the latest updates. Look at this. It's going past, almost past Alabama now all the way into Tennessee, Kentucky, as this comes up towards a tropical depression. Brings a lot of rainfall as well, but the rainfall rates have changed, and a lot of information has changed. So I'm going to go through everything you need in this video. Also, I want to start off with saying, look right here. Remember all that high ridge, all that heat? Y'all in this excessive heat warning. I do have a link on my Twitter, on my X. I reposted it. Some of these temperatures are going to go all the way down to 124 degrees very hot temperatures coming for y'all you're going to be smashing records over there also along the east coast you got the excessive heat you got the heat advisors but the excessive heat and you're going to be smashing some records over there as well now what this is going to do is really going to impact a lot of people and it's going to strengthen this is literally the quiet before the storm so if you've never been here before make sure you subscribe i am all year long with my weather forecast and make sure that you click that bell select all that way you get you know, all the updates, you don't get an occasional one. I have a lot of links in the description for y'all to go check out. A lot of it from National Hurricane Center as well. Going through your surge, your surge inundation, so you can zoom in and see all the latest information. Thank you all for all the likes y'all been putting on the videos, alerting everybody to what's going on. You are truly saving lives. Thank you all so much. Y'all just such a great group of people. I cannot thank you enough. Also, if you want to help the algorithm we get more people notified to this information, if you hit that share button down below, it will suggest this video on the homepage to other people that's getting on YouTube, and they will be notified of this information also. Thank you so much for your help. All right, now turn this one off and let's take a look at what you have on the latest model run because we are still seeing another turn still coming in. So once it reaches all the way to this region, literally in 36 hours, now come tomorrow night, you're going to start getting some banding whipping across, bringing a tropical storm force winds. You see tropical storm force winds is projected all the way towards Houston now. Because of the new cone, this is going to switch again. Now, once you start going towards tomorrow morning, this is where it's going to start losing the wind shear. It's going to start strengthening, taking that east-northeast pull, just like the icon has been showing and still showing. Because the trough is going to be further towards the east. After this high pressure lets it go and steers it to the north, the trough is going to grab it some more. Then it's going to intensify. So look at this. As you're going towards 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, you're going to be getting big old bandings coming across, whipping across some tropical storm force winds at first. You're going to get chances for tornadoes all the way towards Louisiana. Then this is going to start curving towards the east, northeast, and start intensifying. It's going to curve even more. So you can see all the way till tomorrow night by 7 p.m., it's starting to do that curve. So literally when you go in that 12 hour motion, it goes from that low end Cat 1 hurricane and it rapid intensifies. I'm thinking a strong Cat 2, maybe even a low grade Cat 3 at the last moment right before landfall. But if you take a notice, you'll notice that these outer bands, they are flinging way far to the north. Look at that, going all the way north by the time you go to four o'clock in the afternoon for tomorrow and it's going to go even higher so so far you still got the storm surge all the way until 12 noon it is going to keep on going and the hurricane watch is going to extend further up the coast i do believe now turn these off for a second and turn on the chance for a tornado so as we go all the way until tomorrow we're going to start getting the chances for tornadoes and in the, in the white right here this is your two percent but all this brown right here is your five percent from these outer bands that keep coming then when it gets on shore the strongest winds of course is going to be closest to the eye and the biggest threat as you go on for the next day you see it does grow towards louisiana and north chances for tornadoes and that is because of these big outer bands that's going to be flinging around and then the center of the eye is going to also roll around to the north and that's going to keep that threat going right along that as well that's where your most vorticity 
will be. Another thing to add is amount of rainfall that's going to be kicking in with this system just for the next three to five days. Now you're talking in that brown anywhere from eight inches to a foot of rainfall. And now you're talking anywhere from five to eight inches and all of this orange and anywhere from two to four, three to six, as it gets that slow grade from the red to that orange to that dark orange. Look, going all the way up towards Arkansas, I will show you from National Hurricane Center, and you see the latest on the winds that has shifted. So you have tropical storm force impacts in all of this blue section so far. So it's on the edge. You see it's taking that northern push. And so far, the hurricane force winds is somewhere around Victoria and Sea Drift. This will move as well. And you see now the tropical storm force wind field is going way above Houston all the way towards Huntsville. This will move also. And look at the abrupt change in the track. Now we do have our high pressure here revolving around. That's bringing this to the north but that trough coming by is a little further to the east than over texas and that's why it goes further towards the east now you can see this on the latest evolution literally in 24 hours it's going to be strengthening up still going towards texas as a tropical storm but then you're going to get that shear get less and less and in 36 hours it's going to be free to roam this is where it's going to start intensifying going in this path and then that trough is going to go up on that high ridge on that trough. And at the last minute, it's going to take a turn in this path. This would put impacts anywhere on the eastern side going all the way towards Louisiana as well and some of Mississippi. And after 6 to 12 hours, it still don't intensify much. And that's not believable. As soon as that wind shear gets off, it's going to be ready to roll. But it stays right around the edge. And this is right where you have most shallow part of the gulf and the warmest part of the waters that's why you see it intensify as soon as it goes in those waters in that direction now you can see at the last minute euro takes it where it starts weakening down before landfall and it wouldn't do that it's not getting fed the dry air and it weakens down on landfall still a strong system according to the euro all the way towards houston then it starts getting pulled by that trough to the east, northeast, and stays that way for quite some time. Now, when you take a look at the icon, literally in 24 hours, has at the same location, but it shows it starts pulling to that north, the same track that the Euro has, right before landfall, boom, the trough grabs this system right before landfall as is intensifying i believe as a strong cat too maybe even a little bit stronger but look what it does after that it starts pulling it with that high ridge to the east and goes off towards arkansas a little further towards eastern texas that would bring more impacts to the east latest strength advisory on all of them shows it will be a tropical storm once it gets 48 hours and right before landfall this is not believable when this hits warmer waters and the wind shear goes away you're going to see a whole different beast now the latest on the ensembles you can see according to the euro suggesting it will go more towards that direction this gives it a longer time to intensify almost the longest time to intensify also agreeing in groups that it could take more of a eastern track and keep intensifying even over land keep intensifying this is what the icon scene and we all got to be honest the euro saw the sheer weakening it going to the west the icon never let this go and look what we're doing now we keep going more north more eastern I believe the icon is a little bit more to the east than what we're going to see, but it is right on key. I think we'll see this grouping rather than this grouping because just because we won't have a lot of time. So you can see this when you look at the icon model, literally not showing too much strength at, by the time you go to 3 o'clock in the morning for tomorrow. But once you get to 3 o'clock in the morning on the 8th, this is where it turns dramatically. It starts intensifying, bringing a lot stronger winds with this. Look, showing so far, this is wind gust. Show so far 100 and some 105 miles per hour wind gust. Then as it goes on land, look how it gets pulled to the north. Now you got to keep in mind this whole time, you're going to be getting surge. You're going to be getting winds. You're going to be getting chances for tornadoes whipping in the rain bands. This is going to be a pretty hectic scenario still showing a lot of strength on land and look how it gets pulled more towards the east with that when i'm showing landfall is going to be sometime around two o'clock in the morning and that comes to another thing this is going to be a nocturnal 
landfall where you won't be able to see a lot of what's going on, but it's going to sound wild and you're going to see a lot of crazy things. So it's best to listen to all the advisories that you get from your local officials. So as you go into Sunday, as you go into tomorrow, we got a 2% chance for tornadoes right here in Oklahoma, right along the coast. You got a 2% and that 5% that I showed you so far is your cities and states at risk for tornadoes for tomorrow. And then here you are on Monday, just like I showed you in the beginning. So far, here's your cities and states at risk, but you can see the wide area that's at risk. Latest advisory, still have the hurricane watch out. So far, 12 miles per hour, still west, northwest, showing that it will stay strong as a tropical storm towards Houston. That could be a little bit stronger and stay a depression all the way towards the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. Just like the icon been showing, I think we're gonna see a tighter turn in this, and this is gonna go from a Cat 1 hurricane to a Cat 2, possibly to a major. Storm surge impacts are expecting anywhere from two to four feet all the way towards Galveston. As you go towards the center of Texas, you got three to five feet, even including in the bay, all the way down towards Corpus Christi, and then as you go down towards southern Texas, it's two to four feet of storm surge so far. As this strengthens, this will raise up. Link is in the description below. And so is this link also. It lets you know your inundation so you can see how far it's gone. The blue is greater than one foot above normal dry ground. The, the yellow is three feet. That's what we have so far. It will raise up to be more as it intensifies, bringing more rain with it. So you can zoom in and see all the way on your area and see if you got blue or if you got yellow, just to see if you got one foot or three feet inundation, showing more inundation coming more towards Magnolia Beach. A lot of inundation is going to start hitting right here on this front piece, stopping it from going towards y'all, but you can see it does get in. It does get in there. You even get some of greater than six feet inundation, and that's not even on the map. So that is chances for greater than six feet above ground right there as it's going towards Vanderbilt. So just be aware of that. If you zoom in on here, you can see a few more areas where it's showing above six feet so far, and it didn't even strengthen up yet. But you can carry this all the way across and zoom in and see what your risk is for storm surge, for inundation from this system. This is going to update. Links are in the description below. It will update every time you click on it. Rainfall amounts, like I showed you in the beginning, has increased. And you can see that big 8 to 12 inch swath coming all the way through it. You still have 4 to 6 in the yellow, and you still got 6 to 8 in this lighter shade of orange. And in this green, you got 2 to 4 inches in the dark green, 1 to 2 inches in the light green. This will update again. I believe we'll see more of an eastern shift out of all this rainfall. Also, your flood risk. They have raised up not only the slight risk growing everywhere, they have you in a moderate level of risk now. This could move potentially also. But I do have these links in the description for you. So you can see this is a rainfall expected so far in the next five days with the euro. And you can see with the icon showing a little bit more of an eastern shift and bring a lot heavier rainfall. Look, right on Houston. Euro takes a little bit to the west. GFS agrees a little bit to the west and then spreads out. But look at the icon, which has been correct so far, which is worrisome. All that heavy rainfall, a big swath. This will be so much flooding, it's going to be unbelievable. And winds. So you can see with the icon, it is showing those strong winds moving all the way towards Houston, even getting towards 100 miles per hour, 115 towards the coast. This is wind gusts. That's a good note. Bringing 70s and 80s all the way northern, even 60s and 50s. Just keep on going with the winch. You can see with the Euro, it's taking it further to the west. And the GFS also further to the west. Now, when we see this storm intensify, we're going to start seeing more models doing this. Waves has moved also. It just drifted further to the east, what we expected because of what's going on with that system. You see, as it comes in with the wave height, it stays right along the edge, bringing all those 10, maybe even 12 foot waves right along that edge. Bigger waves way out here, but right along the edge is going to be your impacts. And as you go through Monday morning to Monday afternoon, that's where it starts getting a little bit closer on your impacts and tries to move in a little bit. Now, when you go Monday morning to Monday afternoon, this is where it starts pivoting a little bit more and tries to bring more big waves on y'all. Then as you go through the evening, it just will dissipate. You can also take a good look at the grouping on the ensembles. 
They have it far right on the ensembles besides this little group over here. They have it far right where it could be leaning towards another turn. I do believe we are looking at the icon scenario. Now, before you go today, Isaiah 25, 4. For thou has been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Amen. Remember, God will save you. Remember when he came to save them in the boat from all the storms, they did, Jesus did not come immediately. He waited till late hour early in the morning, and then he quieted the storm. Still, whatever God's will be done, I am so thankful for that he chopped off that storm and weakened it down to this point already. We have our best chance at this point. Getting the rainfall y'all wanted, but still way too much rainfall. I'm afraid there's going to be some big problems with that. Even though we see tornadoes and hurricanes, flooding really is the biggest killer of people. It's just people don't turn around. They just go straight through all that flooding, and they have big problems. Please be careful on the streets. This is not going to be even close to no Harvey. I don't know nobody tell you all that, but this is going to start getting bad. I will keep my eye on this, and as changes come in, if there's some big changes this afternoon, I will give you another update this afternoon. But if it's still showing the very same thing, I don't even see the point. Just keep your anxiety low. Keep everything low. Make sure you stay calm. Check on your neighbors. Check on their pets. Make sure your pets are good. Make sure everybody... We'll be okay from this. I see a lot of people in Texas watching for the wildlife animals because there's going to be so much flooding. That is such a great thing to hear. Make sure you check on other people just as intently that you do with the pets because they deserve to be saved also, even the ones that you might not like. Go help them. Maybe become your best friend. Above all things, all glory goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life and forever. And especially through this event. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Good Shabbos to everyone that's in their Sabbath. Hope you have a very peaceful day. I got a feeling I will see you this afternoon.